Okay, uh, what I want to do is talk to you very briefly about one way to measure species diversity and then show you how we calculate that in Excel. Uh, this is a common way to look at communities. And, well, what do we mean by diversity? We just mean how many different individuals and how many different species are in that community. And in general, we would like to see higher biodiversity. As the habitat gets impacted, as the habitat degrades, we tend to lose biodiversity. Well, how do we measure this? There's lots and lots of different ways. They all have their strengths. I'm going to show you the one that I like the best. Now, here's an example fish community. There's three fish communities, A, B, and C. And you see on the left, we've got several different species of fish. And for each community, we indicate how many of that species we find. And you'll see that the communities are all about the same total size. But if you sample them, they would look very different. The first way we look at diversity is called species richness. And that's simply how many species are in each community. And so if you look at the bottom row, you see that we have the same species richness for community A and community B, uh, but much lower richness in community C. And you can probably see one problem with using just richness. Uh, if we use richness, A and B look very similar. But if you look at the numbers of individuals in each of those species, these communities are very different. And so this is a different concept that we call species evenness. So how the numbers are distributed among the species is species evenness. And if they're evenly distributed, like in community A, that shows higher diversity. In community B, we have most of the individuals are in one species, and we only have a single individual in the remaining species. That's low diversity. And so community A is more even. And so we like to take both of these into account when we're calculating species diversity, both the number of species and the distribution of individuals among species. So what we need is a mathematical formula that combines richness and evenness and turns it into a single value. And that single value can be used to compare communities. And ideally, the bigger this value, the more diversity, and the lower this value, the less the diversity. So the one I'm going to show you is called Simpson's Diversity Index, and it does just that. And I like this index because it has an interpretation based upon probability. So Simpson's is basically the probability that two randomly chosen individuals are from different species. Now think about that for a little bit and see if that makes sense to you. So this index runs from 0 to 1. And if it's higher, that means more biodiversity. Well, does that make sense? If you have more diversity, then what's the probability if you grab two individuals at random, they'll be from different species? That's a pretty high probability. But if you have low diversity, then the probability that two randomly chosen individuals are from different species is going to be much lower. The chances are if you grab two individuals at random, they'll be in the same species if you have low diversity. What this means is, is that Simpsons does what we want it to do. If it's higher, you have more diversity. If it's lower, you have less diversity. So here is the formula for Simpsons, and this is what we're going to use in Microsoft Excel to calculate diversity. And in this example, small n is the number of individuals in each species, and big N is the total number of individuals in the community. 
And so if we go back to our original example, the very bottom row shows the calculation for Simpson's diversity for each of these communities. And you can see in community A, we have a very high value for Simpsons. In community B, the value for Simpsons is much lower. And in community C, this, the value for Simpsons is extremely low. But again, this does reflect the biodiversity that we see. Community A is very diverse. It has high richness and the individuals are evenly spread among all the species. Community B has high richness, but most of the individuals are crammed in the first species. So its overall diversity is much lower. Community C has very low richness and very low evenness, and consequently has very low value for Simpson's diversity. Also, again, remember exactly what Simpson's diversity represents. The probability that two randomly chosen individuals will be from different species. So let's say I go to community A, and I just stick my hand in the water and I grab two fish at random. What is the probability that those fish are from different species? It's very high. It's 91%. If I go to community C and I reach in and I grab two fish at random, what's the probability that those fish will be from different species? It's very low. It's like 2%. And you could imagine that in community C. If I grab two species at random, they're most likely going to be largemouth bass. Only 2% of the time will I grab one bass and one bluegill. So again, that's the reason that I like Simpson's diversity. So that's what it means. Now let's jump to Excel and see exactly how we're going to code this in and calculate it. Okay, um, so now we're looking at Excel, and we're looking at what was community A in our early example. And you see I've got the species on the left again. And in this community, we had very good evenness. So we had 10 individuals in each um, species. And so uh, if I want a total that up to see how many are in there. I'm going to select this cell and I'm going to type equals sum open parentheses and I'm going to select these cells close parentheses return and you see I've got a hundred individuals. Now if we look down here again this is the formula for Simpson's diversity and you see that we need to take the number in each species and multiply that by the number in each species minus 1. Then we need to sum all those up. Well, that's what I have set up here. Here I've got n for each species. And so to get n minus 1, I just type a formula where I go equals, and then I select this cell and type minus 1 and hit return and of course you see there's n and there's n minus 1 and I can just grab this little square and drag it down and I copy that formula for each of these cells so that's n that's n minus 1 but I need the product of them as we see down here in the formula so that goes in this column so again, I'm going to use a formula and go equals, and I'm going to select the cell that has n, and then an asterisk for times, and I'm going to select the cell that has n minus 1, and I'm going to hit return, and there you see 9 times 10 is 90. And I'm going to grab this little square, and I'm going to copy that formula down. And so for each species, I have multiplied the number of that species times the number of that species minus 1, just like I need in the formula. 
But you recall in the formula down here that I need to sum up those products. So I need to sum up these numbers. Well, I used the sum in this cell to sum up these numbers. I can just copy it by going Control C and then select this cell and go Control V. And if you look, I'm on this cell, and if you look at the formula, you see that it's summing up these numbers now. If I double click on this cell, it shows me which numbers are being summed. So by copying that formula over, now I'm summing up the numbers that I need summed up. All right. So now I've got all the values I need. I'm going to come down here, and in this cell, I'm going to actually calculate Simpson's diversity. So I need another formula. I'm going to type equals 1 minus, and then if you look at the formula, it's 1 minus this whole big thing here. So I'm going to need an open parentheses, and then I'm going to put in the top the uh, numerator of this fraction, which is the sum of n times n minus 1 for all species, and that's this value right here. So I'm just going to click on that cell and use that value. Well, that value divided by, this is the total number of individuals times the total number of individuals minus 1. So to get this entire thing on the bottom, I need another open parentheses. And first, I need the total number of individuals. Well, we already did that. We summed up the total number of individuals. So I'm just going to select this cell. And I need to multiply that by that cell minus 1. And so I just need to close a parentheses and close a parentheses and close a parentheses. And there I have it. And when I hit return, I get my Simpsons diversity. And if we drag over the PowerPoint from earlier, you see that that's the value of Simpsons diversity we calculated earlier. And so the beauty of doing it this way, I'm going to go ahead and save my Excel file. Save often. The beauty of doing it this way is now that it's set up, I can calculate Simpsons for the other two communities without much effort. So for example, I've got the data from community B right here. And you see here the number in each species. So I'm just going to copy those numbers, and I'm going to paste them here, because this is the number for each of these species. And I'm going to change this to Community B, because it's Community B now. But that's all I have to do. All the other formulas automatically update, and the value for Simpsons automatically updates. And if we check to the earlier table, you see for Community B, we calculated a Simpsons value of 173. And here we've got a value of 173. And if I want to do that for the final community, Community C, I just copy over the values for Community C, paste them here, relabel this Community C, which I do not have to do, but I just want to make it clear. And you see that uh, this needs to go away. Okay. You see that, just like before, we've got 91 largemouth bass, one bluegill, and nothing else. So we have very low richness and very low evenness. All the formulas updated. 
and as the Simpsons formula also updated to point zero two two and here I have point zero two three that's rounding error so it worked so that's how you're going to calculate Simpsons using Excel let me know if you've got any questions